Another episode of Cheater Stories read by myself, Ebony White. Today is April 6th of 2019. We're going to be picking up right where we left off with episode 5. There were 30 stories total and we're now on number 12. I did skip a story because it just didn't make the cut. It wasn't very good. So we're on number 12. Number 12, MySpace Cheating. I have been dating him for almost a year. Things were getting pretty serious and we had talked about moving in together. On a rare evening where I'd returned to my own apartment and after an ironically awesome date night, I opened up the old laptop to find a MySpace message from a girl I'd never met. Long message short, she's been sleeping with my boyfriend under the impression that we had an open relationship. She says that after looking at my MySpace page, she had a feeling that was bullshit. She, she attached some of their email exchanges and it was clearly him. I called him to confront him and after some brief denial, he starts to cry and apologize. I tell him to kindly fuck off, throw the phone, and proceed to the kitchen to demolish a bottle of vodka. Okay, so at this point, the boyfriend was not at her apartment. It was, she was just there alone by herself. Fast forward half an hour or so, and he shows up. Doesn't knock, just comes in and finds me in the kitchen. He begs and pleads for forgiveness, and I'm not hearing it. You can see the crazy eyes switch on at this point. He reaches behind me and grabs the chef's knife out of the block. Starts saying that he can't live without me and that whatever happens to him at this point is on me if I refuse to take him back. I manage to stand my ground, and he leaves with my roommate's knife. She's still pissed. I call the police and while they're taking the report, I get a suicide note via text message from the boyfriend. I show it to the cop and they go on their way. About an hour later, we're talking 2 a.m. at this point, the cop comes back and says, we found him. I don't know anything about his condition other than he's alive. That don't sound good. Son of a bitch has slit his wrist and throat and drove into the bay. He ended up fine admitted for a few days to the psych ward. Q craziness and stalking for a while, he finally disappeared from my life for good in an unrelated incident when he was arrested for attempting to pay for sex with a minor. The fact that he uh, slit his own throat is pretty amazing. People that can mutilate themselves like that, slit their throats, slit their wrists, I mean, that takes a lot of guts. I think it takes a lot of guts to shoot yourself in the head. But to slit your throat is on a whole nother level. And message down below if you agree or disagree. Imagine trying to slit your own throat. Like, I can't even. I can't even. I could imagine shooting myself in the head. Like, I could see that, like, just pulling the trigger and the gun does the rest. I can I can see that, but cutting my own throat no no like even jumping off a building i could see that but throat nah. okay let's go let's go to number 13 she takes him back my friend and her boyfriend were engaged she fell pregnant she says she fell pregnant like like she contracted the disease <laughs> anyway so she fell pregnant they got a house together she gave up her dreams of university happily for them both and the child. Has a miscarriage and finds out that her boyfriend had another girl for the two years they were together. <laughs> My gosh. She found out while in hospital recovering. Since he wasn't there, she found out what he was doing. She took him back. I don't know, guys. Would you take him back? I don't think I could. Two years and she miscarried and he wasn't there so imagine where he was okay I wouldn't have taken him back at this point she's in the clear they don't have any kids together I would have bounced kids can tie you down to a person that you really don't want to be with but if you don't have any kids with this person I really don't see the point in staying with them that's just me Number 14, another who takes him back. Went away with the family. The day after the boyfriend and I had shared the I love you date, he said it first, wake up next morning to three texts, one describing his mistake, 
<gasps> in parentheses, some random chick at a party. One saying, I was too good for him. And the last saying, we should see other people. Flash forward to New Year's, he calls me, talk on the phone for hours. By the end of it, I get drunk and agree to meet up with him later in the month. We hang out, kind of click back to how we were before. He tells me he's leaving the country in two weeks. How would she have known that he was going to skirt out like that? But that's beside the point because she knew he was a dirtbag when she found out that he had fucked some random girl at a club. She knew he was a scumbag. That's why you shouldn't drink. It lowers your inhibitions. Number 15. Attention craving. A girl I'm friends with who regularly lectures me about how I treat girls is the worst person in the world for this. She's pretty, but she craves attention. If her boyfriend isn't giving her maximum attention, then she starts looking elsewhere, but she manages to find some way to blame her boyfriend for it. She was living with a guy I know, and apparently their sex life wasn't great. She was struggling for money a little bit, in parentheses, her own fault though. And he was paying for and he was paying her rent. In the end, I think she owed him close to 1000 pounds. She started sleeping with other people, a lot of other people in all caps. Quite often in their bed while she would engineer a fight and ban him from the house for that night. Oh my god. Then she was getting flirty with a member of a band on Twitter. Everybody could see this guy basically being cuckold, cuckolded by his live-in girlfriend. It was horrendous. Obviously, she ended up sleeping with him too. So I guess she ended up sleeping with the member of the band on Twitter. Okay. The worst one, however, was when she organized a local gig and booked a guy who her boyfriend hated to play. I mean, he fucking despised him. She asked her boyfriend to work on the door and he refused at first, but eventually he relented and said he would. While her boyfriend was working on the door, she fucked this guy in the bathrooms. Ooh, my God, let me repeat this. While her boyfriend was working on the door, she fucked this guy in the bathrooms bareback as some kind of petty revenge awful revenge for what i don't understand what the revenge was for what she did was utterly foul this guy might need some counseling this girl did him so wrong right number 16 godmother to their son i got talking to a woman on public transport randomly just normal polite chit chat before she turned to me with a grave look and said my husband had an affair I apologized because I didn't really know how else to respond. She told me of the 12 years they had been married. He'd been seeing someone else for seven. Oh my gosh. Let me repeat that. Of the 12 years they had been married, he'd been seeing someone else for seven years. They had three kids, 17, 13, and six. The woman he'd been seeing was his best friend. She was a huge part of their lives the oldest son's godmother. She had Sunday lunch with them almost every week. You know how devastating that is? Oh my gosh. The oldest son's godmother, his best friend. Whether you have a, a best friend that's opposite sex or not, you know, that's not going to keep people from cheating, you know? It's just really messed up because this lady was fucking her man and helping out around the house and eating breakfast at their house and and you know smiling in her face and it's just oh you could just tell her cup had runneth over to share this with a complete stranger on the train or the bus you know you could tell she was just like brimming with grief and and disgust and contempt and sorrow i don't even know this woman and my heart goes out to her and her family it's heartbreaking 17 cheating with an entire family oh my gosh i have to hear this cheating with an entire family okay i knew this girl who took the prize home i don't know what that means i knew this girl who took the prize home she gets married to my buddy right after graduating high school 
he joins the military, goes off for training. Okay, this is bad, bad, bad. This is bad from the start. She starts fucking around on him with this one guy. Okay, and now it's starting to make sense now. That's what I was talking about. She starts fucking around on him. Then she breaks it off with the guy she was fucking around with to start fucking around some more with his older brother. The guy she was cheating with's brother. Oh my gosh. So she was fucking around with this one guy, broke up with him, and started fucking around with his brother. Okay. My buddy is still getting trained here, making bank all the while, and she's spending it as fast as he can earn it. She stops fucking around with the older brother, steps up to the guy she was cheating with's father. Oh my gosh. So, younger brother older brother than the father now she's fucking the father he talks her into becoming a stripper at the bar he worked at and she gets up on the stage for all of us to see some nights he brought her and other girls home for big sexy times all the while married to my buddy who dropped her ass finally as soon as he came home oh my gosh thank god thank god he wasn't you know silly and you know kept her around I'm so glad he had the, I don't know the word for it, but I'm glad he had the ability to drop her and just leave it, just leave it there, just leave it alone and walk away. You know what I mean? Um, He had the strength and the ability to do that. God bless him. She was a wreck. She was a fucking wreck. Excuse my language. I mean, you know, I wasn't even planning to cuss as much on this (laughs) on this channel but uh, it's kind of hard not to but anyway that was a lot right she slept with three family members number 18 kidney and a divorce this happened to a guy i knew in high school he was married to a girl for several years that ended up needing a kidney transplant okay so the girl needed the kidney transplant he was a match and gave her one of his kidneys instead of having her wait on the transplant list just three months after the surgery she cheated on him and divorced him you see this is why this is why i'm so anti relationship anti-marriage anti anti loving and trusting people i'm just over it i'm so over it i admit like there are some relationships a very small percentage of relationships that work but the majority relationships are duds number 19 reusing honeymoon plans my old housemate was engaged to a guy and had just taken out a mortgage on a house together on christmas day after eight years of being together he told her that he didn't love her oh my gosh on christmas day after eight years of being together he told her that he didn't love her hadn't loved her for six months and was sleeping with his secretary no shit She breaks down, he gets pissed at her and tells her to sleep on the couch and then tells her to move out the day after. Two months later, he's officially with this other girl and takes her to New York, the planned destination for my housemate's honeymoon. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna, you know, look for the silver lining in this one. They don't have any kids together. There's no baggage other than the mortgage and she can... She can get rid of that mortgage. Whatever blow it takes to her credit report, it can recover. They sound like a a young couple and there's plenty of time for her to bounce back. Actually, let me step back because they don't mention if they had kids together or not. They've been together for eight years. That's a long time. Eight years of your life is a long time. I'd be hot. I'd be so fucking mad. I'd be livid. You know, one year is a long time. So eight years is like, that's a ridiculous long time to, to be wasting it with someone, you know, to get kicked out of your own home. He kicked her out of their home, made her sleep on the couch because she got mad. The dude is psycho. That dude should be evaluated. Number 20, the delivery man, in parentheses, not what you think. A delivery man to my work tells us about his girlfriend. Then a customer tells us that that guy, the delivery man, is dating his sister and that she's cheating on him. 
The saddest part is that he is in his 50s, never had any kids, has money, and a super sweet guy. And I think she's younger. That's messed up. Poor guy. Mm -mm -mm. 21. I guess the wedding's off. At first, a friend and I were working one day, and neither of us were that great with customer service. This was while I worked at a gas station. But it was a nice day and we were in good moods. This woman came in and my buddy asked her how her day was. Such a mistake. She told us that she ain't gotten engaged that morning and we both congratulated her on that. Story wasn't done though. She said because of that, her boss had let her go home early to celebrate. She came home and found her fiance having sex with her mom. Are you fucking serious? Guys, I don't know about you, but that just like blew me away. I thought she was going to say having sex with her dog or her pet pig. Anything, not the mom. Like, really? Only thing I could think to say was, so I guess the wedding's off. I would hope so. I would hope that the wedding is off. If she marries that dick bag, like whatever he does after that it's like pretty much on her it's like just begging for more you know like how could you trust somebody after that how could you trust somebody after that and give them your life i really hope the wedding was off okay second story same friend actually same friend that she worked at the gas station with he was dating this girl for about a year and a half they had gotten very close until she ended up pregnant she promptly freaks the fuck out. She goes between screaming at him and not answering her phone. <laughs> that was kind of up in the air when the cheating started. Oh my gosh. Because it may have actually been the reason for the freak out. Yeah, most likely. That's why she's freaking out. During her freak outs, she starts cheating with some asshole. I guess the freak out part is when she wasn't answering the phone guys a real piece of shit so while all this is going on she goes and aborts the baby doesn't tell my friend he's trying to do the right thing and has been giving her money to get ready for the baby oh my gosh she keeps accepting the money after aborting the baby then her mom dies in a car wreck my friend shows up to the hospital and she refused to let him in other guy shows up at this point which is the first time he and my friend will meet she allows the other guy in to come for her. About a month later, she tells my friend that she had a miscarriage. She took two of her friends with her to the clinic who let him know that this is a lie. She has been alienating everyone and no one wants to participate in her lies anymore. Okay, so the two friends that she took with her to the clinic to have the abortion done let him know that it was a lie. She goes on a camping trip with six guys, comes back with herpes, and pregnant. On the night she comes back, she finds out that he knows she lied about the miscarriage and shows up at his work and starts screaming at him in front of customers. She kept the second pregnancy. It's agreed that he dodged a huge bullet. Indeed, yes, he did. Oh, wow. She went camping with six guys, comes back with herpes, and pregnant. What I want to know is how she found out that her ex-boyfriend knew about the miscarriage. That's what I want to know. And why go to his work and start screaming at him? Like, what did he do? You know, she was dead wrong for killing his baby. But since she did do it, he definitely dodged the bullet because that chick was insane. Coming up to his job after he finds out about it, that's messed up. Like, she could have got him fired or something. Alright, so we're gonna stop right there. Number 21. It's getting dark outside. Alright, guys, Cheater Stories, Ebony White. I'm signing out right there. We're gonna pick up where we left off on number seven. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching, and I will see you again very soon. Uh -huh.